Okay, welcome everybody to the October 12th, 2023 regular scheduled city council meeting. May we have a roll call? Councilmember Brooks? Here. Councilmember Clark? Here. Councilmember Peterson? Here. Vice Mayor Brown? Here. And Mayor Kaiser? Here. And please join in the Pledge of Allegiance. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Do we have any additions or deletions? Staff has one proposed change to the agenda this evening, the item 3A, the presentation on unmanned aerial vehicles. Uh, staff would like to remove that from this agenda item. We will be bringing it back at a future meeting. Okay, thanks. So then we can skip over three and down to additional materials. Staff received one email communication relating to item 7G on tonight's agenda and two email communications related to item 8B on tonight's agenda. All items have been incorporated into the online agenda packet as well as presentations for tonight's uh, general government items. Great. We can open it up to oral communications by members of the public. Um, this can be on anything on consent or anything that is not agendized this evening. And you will have no more than three minutes. Hi, my name is Goran Klapic. Today at 1246, I made an emergency call to the CPD because I caught somebody begging for money uh, by the uh, Knob Hill on the Pete's Coffee uh, premises. That was on the premises of Capitola City on Capitola Village. As I, as I know, I never encountered that before, that somebody's begging for money. Uh, Capitola is a very rich community and it should not be allowing uh, homeless people or whoever is unfo so unfortunate enough to beg for money. Uh, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Uh, God bless you. Goodbye. Thank you. Uh, Mayor and City Council, Gary Richard Arnold. Um, a lot of people are unfamiliar with the uh, powers that exist in the state of California. The Most of the newspapers were bought out by a... Uh, coalition of Bill Gates and other people almost 18 years ago. He bought the Mercury, the Sentinel, the Monterey Herald, the San, uh, San Luis Obispo Tribune. And um, if you know the history of the good times, uh, you really should. Look up uh, Mr. Weinstein and in these times, he used to drive around the uh, Morton Sobel Atomic Spies. Uh, they continue to endorse as they do, but they look you know, very friendly. Uh, they also have a conduit in San Luis Obispo called uh, uh, New Times. Uh, but the propaganda continues. Uh, the largest lobby west of the Mississippi is California Forward, which is put together by Leon Panetta, uh, very powerful. And if you ever happen to go to the courthouse steps, you'll find the communist spy has two plaques in his honor. Uh, he belonged to at least four different spy rings, where Silver Master, uh, a couple of others, Sorge, which is the most successful spy ring ever. Uh, the co-founder with Leon Panetta for California Forward is Lenny Mendonca, and he belongs to a committee for economic development. They advocating abolishing you. And they've been setting up a parallel government for some 25, 30 years. And uh, it's a COG, a council of governments, a Soviet, in which the mayor and vice mayor is a member of, uh, which is AMBAG. Um, I asked you both, mayor and vice mayor, to have community TV show up and do that, uh, since AMBAG is made up of 13 cities and three counties. And I noticed uh, just for your you know, July community TV, it was $678. That means it's only gonna cost $42 for each city and each county to become transparent and see where a lot of dirty backroom stuff goes on, and you know it. Um, anyway, uh, AMBAG has a handle, 
national uh, manipulation. Uh, both the World Bank and the United Nations are seeking to harmonize, as you hear people, the, the various times I attend, uh, for 13 cities and three counties, they had six copies of the agenda. Um, can I hear that, please? Please, can you uh, please speak? If you if you don't want to listen, uh, don't. I, that's, that's all right. Um, also, I, I think it's important uh, that you look at the management form of uh, government. Inter uh, the city managers. Thank okay. you. Um, I'd like to pull uh, the three uh, consent Thank item you so much. G off the consent calendar. Thank you. Guess I'll sign this later. My name is James Euling Whitman. I used to live within a mile of here. I was I came here. It took me almost thirty minutes to get here from less than three miles. It's crazy this time of day. So I appreciate that all of you are mostly paying attention to the previous speaker. I've been here before and I've witnessed most of you looking down at your phones or computers. So I'm not really quite sure where to start to talk. I had several opportunities to pull four items off the consent agenda with the city of Santa Cruz and um, got a really good one-sided explanation of uh, city and county managers. So I really have a lot of compassion for you guys. I know that you would like to do, I'm speaking to all four of you, to do more for your constituents that voted you in the office, but you're being controlled like puppets by an individual. And I have, don't know you, Jamie, at all, but um, I'm very familiar with Carlos Palacios and the previous city manager before Matt. Um, so I have a lot of compassion because I'm sure your constituents are wanting you to do things that you're not able to do because this is a charter city and it's been under the control of international organizations in the United States since 1915. So probably enough on that. There's a lot of crazy things going on in our society. Um, I'm not quite sure why a city council member on Tuesday decided to present a one-sided conversation about some atrocities that are happening um, in a section of the Middle East, a whole area that was created before 1950. I have a globe that shows what that part of the world looked like before 1945, and we are all in this together. Got a minute and 15 seconds. So I'll share something, at least with Mr. Clark. I mean, I appreciate meeting him a couple weeks ago on September 19th as he was a volunteer deputy and uh, he gave me some really good observations that I think I used, and hopefully I'm using those observations now. I would much prefer to be talking to a, a guest speaker in a K through eight, because those children have brothers and sisters in the room, and they're there to learn something and to help each other. Where you guys have your arms tied. So I wrote something five to seven years ago that I'd be happy to share with you, at least you, Mr. Clark, where I feel because of the exact top topography here that you could set up events and make at least $300,000 on a three-day event where there would be like $120,000 in hard costs, but 80000 of that would be reusable. And I would love to talk to you guys about ways to make the city better. And I'm very happy that the Capitola Pier is being repaired because I've been enjoying that for more than 50 years. So thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in house wish to speak? Seeing none. Point of order as far as uh, item G. Is that the N no. Allow that to... Your time has been up. Thank you. Can we go online to see okay, if there's I was anybody? Told something absolutely different over by this table. So you Sir, your you time has been up. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry. I am too. You are violating, and the city attorney is going to hear about it in the Brown Act. I'm out of here. Is there anybody you're online? Up, you're covering up expenses and lobbying and so forth. Okay. That Mr. Peterson went to. Thank I'm you. There are no speakers with their hands raised on Zoom, Mayor. Okay. Thank you. We'll take this to any staff comments. Do you believe we have one important staff introduction here to make this <laughs> evening? <laughs> An 
important staff introduction to make. That's the cue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, we're here this evening to introduce uh, Ranger, who is a two and a half or two year old uh, Labradoodle. It was um, uh, the funding for it was donated from a private uh, vendor or private donor. Um, but uh, he's joined our team and he's a been a really welcomed addition to our department. Actually, the first day, one of we put him out on social media, and uh, actually, someone came down. A, a young lady came down and to to actually introduce herself to the dog. She had no idea that a dog like this would be a part of a police department. So, he's been really well received. His job is to go out and do just stuff like this and be in the community. But he also has a professional side to him that he can sit down and do child interviews, and we're hoping to develop him better as, as far as the, the more, more ways that we can use him in the community to get out there and just kind of put a different face to, to our department and everyone else. But like I said, it's been a, he, he just wanders around our office. You're more than welcome to come down when uh, Sergeant Zamora is working and introduce yourself, take him for a walk, whatever. Um, like I said, he's a, he's, a, he's a part of our department and the community, so. We're glad to have Ranger. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Get on that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure all of you guys have met him. We have. He's so sweet. Come out about. Come say hi. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Is it too early to nominate him for the Officer of the Year Award? <laughs> <laughs> all right. And we'll take it back to council for comments. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to uh, comment on our consent agenda and thank staff for returning the tobacco waste as a public health issue uh, item that will be on uh, consent. I appreciate that. Um, we also received an email um, about a right to read proclamation, and so I'd like to ask for a future agenda item with a resolution against banning books and materials in the Santa Cruz Public Library system. Uh, and then I just wanted to share. Um, some more good news coming out of Santa Cruz Metro. It feels like every time the Metro uh, board meets, there's some new exciting news. And this time, it's that uh, Metro has been awarded uh, $508,000 from the Clean uh, California program for its bus stop improvement project. And it will be used, the funds will be used to install 23 bus shelters, 23 benches, and 18 trash cans at bus stops across the service area. So along with our recent uh, contract for the largest uh, hydrogen fuel cell electric battery bus fleet in the country and our reimagined Metro that's going to be bringing more service through our city, uh, there's just a lot of really exciting things going on in Metro that I wanted to share. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. I wanted to shout out for CWIP and the Oktoberfest coming up on Saturday. Noon to six at the uh, Esplanade Park. There'll be music there by uh, Jive Machine in Santa Cruz. That should be a good event, and it'll be more money for our great project out on the wharf. So, if you're around on Saturday, come on down. Great, thank you. I love the flyer, Councilmember Clark. I want to come in prepared <laughs> next time with like stuff to present. Make sure we get that out. Um, I have a couple of announcements. Um, the first is that I, too, attended the league with Councilmember Peterson. <laughs> so we had a great time um, attending the League of Cities on the, from the 20th to the, through the 22nd. And I was representing um, the as the first president of the Monterey Executive Board of Directors for the League of Cities. So um, the biggest takeaway that I had there was this phenomenal speaker, Brandon Fleming, who said, we cannot be what we cannot see. And it just really resonated with me, especially as policymakers um, attending that event, because I was able to attend the, the previous event where we set the policies um, that we wanted to see uh, come to fruition for the state of California. And to see everyone there was great. And um, we had a great time with, uh, together. I also um, want to give a huge shout out to um, our, our police officer, Sarah Ryan, our um, who helped coordinate with the Youth Action Network and uh, several other organizations at the Youth Hub 
it's going to be named soon, um, but what we, we were able to do is utilize the space at the Capitola Mall to invite youth in and offer resources and snacks and just a cool, safe place to be. Um, we're going to be circling back in a couple of days to um, talk about whether we can make this happen in perpetuity or um, as a meeting spot. So um, more to come on that. It was a great turnout. And then um, also on last Friday's um, Friday update, we received correspondence regarding the Chief's Council. And I'd like for staff to come back to us um, to full council on the process in which the members were picked and, um, and what we can do to help support the, um, that group moving forward and, um, and ensuring that we have just a really great diverse representation of the community. And that's all I have. Thank you. Great. Um, and I would just like to piggyback on that. Um, if we're going to agendize um, the council um, for the chief, if we could maybe get a little bit more um, background information on um, sort of where this came about and what the group is all about, because I think I need to know more. So I'm sure others might as well. Thank you. Okay, so consent item seven. Uh, these can be enacted in one motion in the form listed below, or unless anybody needs to pull something. Do we have a first? I'll move to uh, adopt the consent agenda. I'll second. Great. First and a second. Maybe we have a roll call, please. Councilmember Brooks? Aye. Councilmember Clark? Aye. Councilmember Peterson? Aye. Vice Mayor Brown? Aye. And Mayor Kaiser? Aye. Thank you so much. You already had your three minutes. Your three minutes are up for that. The opportunity to speak on consent items is at the beginning during general public comment. Correct. Okay, moving on to eight, general government. 8A, we have the Cliff Drive Resiliency Project. The recommended action tonight is to authorize the city manager to execute the professional services agreement with CSW Stuber Stroh Engineering Group Incorporated for professional planning, permitting, design services um, for this resilience. Resil Oh my gosh, resiliency project in the amount of 1.193. Um, and we have Director Khan here. Hi, good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm here this evening to talk to you all about the Cliff Drive Resiliency Project. Next slide, please. So, a little bit of background if you're not familiar with Cliff Drive, um, it's this. Cliffside Drive right over there. It's a heavily utilized arterial road. It's used for emergency access both uh, into and out of the village. It has a multi-user base. It has a lot of uh, pedestrians and bicycle users out there looking for the view and to come into the village, as well as quite a bit of vehicle traffic. Uh, it sustained damage in January 2023 during the storms, mostly during near the two parking areas. A lot of the riprap was damaged at that time and, and localized bluff erosion. Um, staff has been able to secure funding to both study and now construct some type of um, shoreline armoring in this area. Uh, first, from the Coastal Commission's Local Coastal Program grant that is funding the alternatives analysis that uh, we had reported on earlier this year. And most recently, FHWA, Federal Highway Administration's Emergency Relief Funding via Caltrans for the repair and betterment of this area. Next slide, please. So these are the two areas that had the localized erosion this year. There wasn't a whole lot of damage to the span in between. However, the emergency funding from FHWA allows us to apply for a betterment. So that allows us to apply for funding to stabilize the entire bluff side, not just the side that was damaged. And so that's where the funding is coming from for this program. Next slide, please. Just a couple of images of the damage that occurred. This is right above the upper or uphill parking area. Next slide. 
And then this is the current shoreline armoring we have here. We have the riprap on the bottom and this wall at the top. It was installed in 1997. Uh, that's the picture on the left. And then this is from earlier this year on the right. You can see it is somewhat eroded and is in need of repair or replacement. Next slide, please. So we put this uh, project out to bid following all of the Caltrans guidelines a couple of months ago and received a uh, consultant proposal from CSWST2. Um, and that combines several subs on this project who are really well respected in this area. We initially expected uh, proposals from multiple proposals from places like NGO, Biggs Cardosa, Moffat and Nickel. And considering the timeline of this project and the very wide scope of this project, going all the way from planning through construction, uh, the feedback we got from all of these groups was really to get it done in that timeline in the appropriate way that they really needed to come together. And that is the reason we really only got one combined proposal for this project. Next slide. So the design scope is divided into two areas, one being the alternatives analysis. Um, which is going to take into consideration the existing conditions and opportunities in the area, do outreach, project alternatives, refine the project alternative, and then phase two is bringing us to design and construction. So I'm going to go a little bit uh, deeper into each of these steps on these next slides. So our, our opportunities and constraints assessment is really assessing con existing conditions and doing like initial technical analyses. So really just kind of understanding what's even feasible for armoring in this area. And the deliverable from that is to really get a map showing what the uh, existing topography, boundaries, kind of what our restrictions are with the Cal Caltrans, RTC right of way and the bluff slope. Next slide. Then we go into the alternatives analysis, which for phase one is really the bulk of this project. So it's a detailed analysis of um, and creating visual exhibits of alternatives. Those detailed analysis being considering design life, coastal access, transportation, visual impacts, sea level rise, many of the things we're going to have to get permits for in phase two. And then a lot, a lot of outreach. So both public outreach with um, surveys, social media, public meetings, meetings here to the council updating you along the way, and then also outreach to our stakeholders, um, all of our permitting agencies, and then others such as um, the Surf Writer Foundation and other interested parties. Um, from the outreach and the detailed analysis, we will refine our design alternatives and identify a preferred option. And that preferred option is what we would take to the Coastal, Amend coastal Commission to do a local coastal program amendment. So this will require an amendment to our local coastal program and then also a permit specifically for this project. Next slide, please. Uh, and then the last uh, part of phase one would be to do those final technical analyses after we get sign off from the Coastal Commission that this is a good project to go with. And then that final stakeholder outreach where we go to the community with this is what the final plan is. Next slide, please. So with that 35% project that we have from our first phase, we'll go into phase two to prepare and circulate all of our environmental documentation. Um, we anticipate an I, initial study mitigated neg deck for our CEQA, and then that to inform the categorical exclusions for NEPA. NEPA is required because this is a federal project, a federally funded project. Next slide, please. Madam Mayor, we're apparently having some audio issues on the YouTube and the Zoom. Okay. So we were just, they asked in the back if we could pause for a moment or two and they could. I think the to... audio actually just went live. It's showing as tracking right now. So the audio should be good. Okay. Well, in that case. Sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, let's, let's post it if we need to. <laughs> So also with these 35% plans, we can go out and get all of our regulatory permits. So there's a host of them. They are listed here. There are probably more than are listed here. So that will be a big bulk of phase two is getting all the permits for this project, similar and probably a little more than what we received for the wharf. Um, and then also going back and getting the coastal development permit um, through our local coastal program. We'll have more details on that the closer we get to it. Next slide, please. And then our final design, our bid ready plan specifications and estimates. And then we can take all that and go back to Caltrans and ask for our um, 
funds for construction. And so all of this needs to take place before September of 2025. Next slide, please. So here is our schedule. You can see many of the tasks overlap. That's really just the point of the slide is many of these tasks overlap. And it's a very quick process to get from really a planning conceptual design to a final permitted and funded project through FHWA. Next slide, please. Um, as far as the fiscal impact goes, so uh, there are two parts of these federally funded projects. One is for what they call preliminary engineering, but that's really taking us through our fully designed project, even though it's just called preliminary. So that is currently funded. Um, by funded, they mean money that we can spend towards it, and they will give us 88% of it. So they will, the federal government will provide $743,000, of which we are to match with non-federal funds. Luckily, we have the Coastal Commission grant, which are state funds, so we can use that as our match. And then the remaining of that funds rounds out the whole funding for the project. So we have the bottom line there, the 743 from the federal government, the match that's required, and then the remainder of the Coastal Commission grant all adds up to $1.2 million. So there's no general fund money going to this project, to the design of this project at this point. Next slide, please. The construction phase funding, we've been approved for $8.4 million in federal funding. There is a chance that once we get through our whole planning criteria that we can ask for up to 15% more than that, and those are usually relatively easy to get approved. We still have to come up with the approximately 12% match regardless of the funding that they give us. Um, that funding could come from Measure F. It could come from the State Coastal Conservancy since a mitigation of this project is likely to be a walkway on the top of the, and that is something that the Coastal Conservancy would fund. And then there are other grant opportunities that would generally fund multimodal transportation and coastal access that the city staff will be looking into during this project. Next slide, please. And so this is our final recommended action to authorize the city manager to ex execute the professional services agreement in a similar form as the attached agreement, similar form being that this is still going through Caltrans review. Um, there are two departments of Caltrans that this has to go through. One has actually already been approved, so we're good to go. We're waiting on their architectural engineering review, which we expect in the next week, which may change a couple of the um, points in the agreement. So that's why we don't have the totally um, approved agreement in front of you today and then to adopt a resolution to accept the funds for both FHWA and the Coastal Commission. And I am available for any questions. Questions from anybody? Is there a specific um, form of erosion control being considered at this time, or will that come out of the study? That will be coming out of the alternatives analysis. Um, you mentioned a walkway. Yes. Was that on the ocean side or? Preferably, yes. Okay, like where the parking is now? Partially where the parking is. Um, the idea would be to retain the parking. Everyone likes parking. Co right. uh, Coastal Commission never wants to restrict. That would be restricting access. Um, we an anticipate the Coastal Commission having that be one of our mitigations for this project is to, to include a walkway. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right. I have another question. Yeah. Will we have an opportunity for, to provide feedback at some point during this process? Absolutely, yes. That is part of the public outreach part. So there is public outreach to the general community, to interested parties, but then also to the council specifically. Great, thank you. All right. Um, any public comment on this specific item? Yeah, my name is James Ewing Whitman. I appreciate the presentation. I certainly learned a lot. So about $1.3 million in design fees for something that was built, I think, in 1995. It seemed to last 25 years with the plans for that lost. Couldn't they just be reused? So it's just a, I want to stay on topic, but I mean, I appreciate that this is like a regular commercial project where it's heavily front-loaded at the beginning so that stuff can be invested. There's so many of the agenda 2030 words being used, equity, stakeholders and stuff, the whole cliff drive resiliency project. You know, last year's storms were pretty impressive, but there's been a lot of impressive storms going on. So 
hopefully tiny projects like this and we have miles of co coastline can be remedied in simple ways as what was done 25 years ago that lasted 25 years. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public or anybody online? There are no speakers with their hands raised, Mayor. Okay, we can take it back to council for deliberation or comments. Yeah, I'd be happy to move the um, recommended action from staff this evening. I'll second. Great, we have a motion and a second. May we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Brooks? Aye. Councilmember Clark? Aye. Councilmember Peterson? Aye. Vice Mayor Brown? And Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Passes unanimously. Thank you. All right. We will move down to a, item 8B, housing element update. We are here to accept the presentation and direct staff to incorporate Planning Commission and the California Department of Housing and Community Development recommendations into the draft housing element. And here is Ms. Hurley. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, Tonight, we've got Layla from our city attorney's office also joining me. She's been really instrumental in the housing element update. And we do not have our, um, we don't have our um, with us Veronica. tonight or Veronica Tam. We're trying to stay on budget with this project. So <laughs> they will be at the adoption hearings. Um, so tonight, I'm giving you an update on our housing element. Next slide, please. Um, within the update, first, I'll do a quick introduction to what a housing element is and then what we've heard in the last 90 days with the HCD review and the next steps. Next slide, please. Um, so housing element, it's really, it's identifying the needs within our community for future housing. And then it also sets, um, it plans how we're going to meet that need in the coming cycle of eight years. So we're about to enter our sixth cycle. And the deadline for this um, update is December 15th. Just right around the corner there. Next slide, please. In the process, we've come a long way. Um, we drafted our housing needs, um, our element and programs. The last step that we just made it through is the 90-day review by HCD. And within that review period, um, we had the opportunity of meeting with them multiple times and getting comments back on our draft element. Um, next slide, please. So in this slide, I show the public review draft is towards the back that went out in May. And then in July, we submitted to HCD. Um, usually, I would come back to the Planning Commission and City Council in between, give you updates, get your feedback. But it's a really limited window. So we just continued at a staff level to work with HCD, get comments, and uh, with our local knowledge and understanding of, of typical direction from uh, Planning Commission in council, we continue to proceed um, and work through comments. So we're now, uh, we've got our September 19th update and we received comments on October 3rd from HCD, which is the final comments, which is a five page letter, which is attached to your um, report this evening. And the five page letter is a really short letter for HCD comments after 90 days. So we're getting close. Yeah, next slide, please. So tonight I'll be uh, highlighting what changes we made in response to HCD, and then I'll also, uh, if you can go forward, be um, providing the updates from the October 3rd letter. So really it's the October 3rd letter that are the outstanding items. And at the end of my slide presentation, I'll have a slide that brings it all together of what we're recommending or and looking for feedback on this evening. Next slide, please. So our housing needs and opportunities um, this, we had to provide a lot more information of how we came up with the sites that were um, identified and the assumptions that were put into our housing inventory. And then also um, providing updated, we had, we had to update our site's inventory. Um, next, during this process in our letter, we got feedback from HCD that the Capitola Mall site, um, we needed to provide additional information. So in the next round, we're gonna uh, provide more of a story of what's happened at the Capitola Mall over the years and the big, the submittal in 2019 and the proposed phasing. So that will be, it'll be a whole lot more clear in the update. Next slide, please. So we did make changes to our site's inventory during this time. Um, we received a letter from Merlone Geyer. We also received comments from Yimby during this 
about our site's inventory. And we ended up removing the Kohl's site from the mall because they do have a long-term lease there. And then we um, added a few sites, which um, at this point we have a 14% buffer, which is healthy. I was hoping to get to 15, but somewhere between 15 and 20, but we're at 14, which is a good spot because originally I think we were at 18. So with the removal of some sites, if you go to the next slide, I can show you exactly what's changed since you last saw this. So um, we, we were directed to remove all the state sites. So those have now been re removed, including the DMV site and the New Brighton site. Um, also, the coal site has been removed. We added portions of sites. So for Knob Hill, we added the parking lot in front of the grocery store where you could actually do some housing. We didn't use the whole parking lot. I think we used about 50%, and that's the same for Kings Plaza. So just a portion of those sites where you could possibly put housing and have a parking garage because you would need additional parking. Um, and then also added the Macy's site at the mall because it's ready for redevelopment as well. Next slide, please. Um, so in our first iteration, the mall had 853 units associated with it. Um, the letter we received from Merlon Geyer is that, you know, Kohl's has a long-term lease. Also, some of the internal um, smaller shops along the spine near the Macy's entrance have long-term leases, and that they've got some parking agreements with Target and Macy's. So we, um, <laughs> and we also heard from them that they thought there's an over-reliance on the mall, and we're concerned with no net loss findings. We also heard that from Yimby. Um, so in the current draft, we're at 641 units, that's including the Macy's site, which is not owned by Merlon Geyer. Um, we've removed the coal site, and then as I stated previously, the sites that we added, so Knob Hill and Kings Plaza. Um, in terms of our constraints, there were requests for more information, so um, they just wanted more information on what tools we have. I think the state was really happy that we don't have limits within our mixed use areas and commercial um, and a lot of programs we already have in place in terms of ADUs so where they were asking for more information on that they're satisfied that we've uh, we've got great programs implemented for ADUs and just updates on additional information for residential care and water availability as well. um, within our housing plan this is where you have your programs and you set dates targets um, for achieving. In our first housing program, we uh, talk about diversity of housing type, and the HCD came back and they said, we really want you to start targeting more housing in your single family, high resource neighborhoods. And so as you know, we have our ADU ordinance, we have SB9, um, and they said, we'd like you to go beyond what the state requires and take it to the next level. So we could go forward. The recommendation for this to go beyond and get more access into our uh, lower density neighborhoods is one, to look at our density limits on our low and medium density, which are really low. So I think there's the opportunity there to raise it by um, a few units per acre. Um, that's And then also to allow duplexes on corner lots in the R1 zone. So those are the, and tie those to objective standards. So making sure that like, you know, the frontage is oriented towards the, towards the street. So it kind of looks like two single family homes and uh, make sure there's parking access and just standards that are measurable. Next slide, please. Um, within program 1.4, um, in which we're proposing to expand the community benefit zone, the HCD came back. They actually, they've met with EMB. There were a lot of conversations about this. Um, of really looking at our community benefit zones, which right now are around the mall. And you can get in, increased floor area ratio and height. And um, they're saying they haven't seen the impact of that. We haven't had any projects developed. So let's reanalyze it, look at the application process, and um, look at objective, including objective standards. So more projects will come in and developers will know what to expect. So next slide, please. So, our recommendation tonight is that we update this with commitments to revisit the community benefits overlay, 
to incorporate objective standards, and then we'll also um, reevaluate those incentives of additional height and FAR. Um, the housing plan, um, the, these two programs, they talk about residential parking requirements we're going to revise. We didn't get any comments on that from HCD. One program that we've added is a new shopping center redevelopment program. So it's not only tied to the mall. It could be at King's Plaza, any of our Begonia Plaza, along 41st Avenue. And the commitment here is uh, to move forward with our land use study, which is underway. And then from that land use study, uh, the initial draft had, it was quite prescriptive in what we would be doing on these shopping centers. And comments um, from our planning commission, and if you can forward. Uh, Planning Commission said this is way too specific. We're saying we're going to look at clustering and we're prescribing the outcome. So let's remove what we're prescribing and get the results of that land use study and then commit to um, implementing that the outcome of that study. So that's one of our recommendations this evening. And then our housing plan. Um, on this. We also got comments from the HCD about there's new state law around new religious facility housing in which you can put housing over, I think it's 50% of the existing parking areas. Uh, so there was a request from the state for us to go deeper into that and uh, draft up objective standards tied to that new state law, as well as um, identifying how we're going to uh, deal with underutilized buildings, parking, development. Next slide. So we'll be providing more details on that to the state. Um, and then other additions, which one was to encourage developers and contractors to hire local labor. That's We had public comment on that and have implemented that into the draft. Um, there's a program for emergency rental housing, which we already have going, but a commitment to continue it. And then also just updates to the Fair Housing Action a summary. Um, and then in terms of affirmatively furthering fair housing, the comments here were really to create more, more opportunities in our single family neighborhoods. So next. This is just, again, re-looking at our density limits for the low and medium multifamily and then the duplexes on corner lots. Next slide, please. So there's a lot of typing on this slide, and I break about every slide rule for a presentation here, so please excuse this slide. But I just wanted to let you know, um, we were, you received a letter yesterday from EMB. We've been working really closely with them throughout this whole process, and um, the, their comments really align with a lot of the suggestions that HCD had. So tonight I would like... Uh, the recommendation to include to incorporate EMB's comments into the updated draft. On this slide, I've, I've included the language. Um, it'll probably be massaged a little bit with through our uh, working with the consultant and what they think it should exactly say in the update. But really, this uh, it talks about just working with AMBAG towards high quality uh, transit stops, um, uh, incentivizing more housing along your transit corridors, which is a no-brainer, right, in, in modern planning. Um, also looking at those incentives for community benefits, utilizing an outcome of our study, um, and objective standards is something that comes up again and again with EMB, is really making it clear to your applicants what we're gonna be looking for. Um, and also uh, just tracking them all as we move through it um, on an annual basis, provide updates on what's going on with them all and then that religious facilities housing and how to incorporate that into our code. So a lot of overlap with the HCD comments, which is great. And um, Janine's been fantastic to work with with the EMB group. So next slide, please. So these are, this is the recommendation tonight includes all of these final edits for adoption. And we're gonna be going to press tomorrow for a planning commission special meeting for um, the draft update. So any comments you make tonight that you'd like updated into this draft will be moving forward with our adoption hearing. So here I have the all the strategies I brought up in my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, and then we can move into public comment. Uh, 
uh, the recommendation this evening, so I guess next steps is planning commission next week, and then I'll be bringing um, the final draft to you on November 9th for adoption. The statutory deadline is December 15th. Um, so the recommended action tonight is to direct staff to incorporate the planning commission, HCD, and Santa Cruz EMB recommendations into the draft housing element in preparation for adoption. It's slightly changed that I added the EMB yeah. to the original recommendation. So with that, I'm available for questions. And Great, thank you. Council questions? Mm -hmm. I just have uh, one question about the, um, the shopping center redevelopment in program 1.7. HCD in their letter had like specific language about how to facilitate this development and monitor approvals. And it, it gave us examples like coordination with applicants and supporting funding applications, but we didn't use any of the language they gave us. And I'm just wondering why. Um, well, from the letter, we haven't seen the, the latest update in our, um, the draft that you have is was prior to our most up-to-date letter. Oh, it's, oh, I see, okay. That's why. So it'll those will be incorporated in the next. That will be okay. That cool. will go out tomorrow. So that makes sense. Thank you. But we are going to talk through that one with HCD because um, we really think that the outcome of that study is necessary before we say exactly what needs to be done. I, I have one question. And talking about revising parking requirement, is that adding more or less or? It'll most likely be taking away parking. So in multifamily right now, we require two and a half spaces per unit. And we'll probably be looking at it differently of like maybe taking a bedroom count or looking at square footage. Um, but the trend is to re like require less parking. Difficult thing for small capital, but I understand. <laughs> the other thing was uh, Yimby. I'm, I'm not sure how they play into this and how we incorporate them into our um, our plan. It's, or kind of like an outside entity or something, but uh, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Yeah, you know, uh, Yimby's been working with communities throughout California on their housing element updates, and they're really focused on their housing element updates. Uh, this, the Santa Cruz Yimby group has been working with all of the local jurisdictions here and giving feedback, and they've, um, it, it's actually been really helpful to, to hear their comments, and it's great that they align with the HCD comments. So it's been a positive experience. Yeah, thanks. Um, great job, by the way. <laughs> um, I had a question about the 50% um, parking at Knob Hill and Kings Plaza. Do you think that HCD is going to consider that to be a realistic possibility for development? I do. Yeah, I think, <laughs> it's, I think because it's partial and we know that those, um, I think King's Plaza is a very successful plaza. They've got great businesses in there. I don't think anyone's moving away too fast, but this is, um, from working with our consultant with Veronica, this has been a strategy that they've used in the past that has been successful. And um, that that they're allowed to do that at that location currently? Yep. Yeah, great. yeah, you can do, as long as commercial is on the site, you can build housing next to it. It just, we don't require that all ground floor be commercial. So you could do a housing development next to a commercial site. So it would work. Great. Oh, I had one more question. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's 600 Park Avenue. Is that, is that on the current list? It's not. Uh, 600 Park Avenue was in the last two rounds of our housing element, and it kind of puts us at risk that it wouldn't um, be required to go before the Planning Commission for review if it were in a third round. So right now it's not currently in our list. And actually I went out there uh, and toured the site with Veronica, and once she saw it, it's really, uh, there's a lot of individual single-story buildings, she said to redevelop that site, you'd really have to put at least three to four times the amount of housing that's there to get the 
money back from the investment that they're already making off of those rentals. So she thought it was really a challenged site compared to other ones, which King's Plaza, she thought was fantastic. Really? Yeah. Yep. Interesting. Okay. Thank you. But you have to uh, provide those housing units. You, you can't just remove them. You have to replace all of the ones and then yeah. build on top of that. There's, it's a, it's a, it's a parcel. Challenge. It is a very large you parcel. You had a couple of three stories. It would I'm sure you've said this before. When we identify sites such as King's Plaza or um, the Knopf Hill Shopping Center, do you notify them? Like, what's the, you know, we're like, surprise, you know? <laughs> I know we did community input first stages, right? We went out. And, and so now that we're moving forward, what's that process look like? Or what, what's been done? Or are we surprising folks? Um, you know, we did developer interest meetings in the beginning, and actually that allows uh, provided input that they'd be interested on a neighboring parcel. But as we've been moving through this, um, I have been sending the updates out to all interested parties, which a lot of those, the, anyone that told me that they were interested along the way, which the developer interest meetings, they've been getting my, you're all getting my emails, right, whenever we update the housing element. So they're getting those. We're not reaching out to them directly to say, you've been added to the uh, housing element. The, the noticing requirements tied to a housing element is if it affects more than a thousand properties, you can put a quarter page ad in the newspaper. So that's what we're doing for our adoption hearing, as well as the emails. Um, I had a question about, um, didn't we talk about the um, religious property up on um, Monterey? Um, was that included? Yes, and they they have developer interest there, so they I think they're moving forward with two units currently on that site. Oh, okay. So Saint is that something different than the? Was there like a percentage? Uh, oh no, never mind. I think I'm confusing the parking lot and the. Okay, but that is still considered. That is still considered. Okay. Okay. I should have added one more thing. Uh, the Planning Commission also directed staff in that the long list at the very end. Mm -hmm. They directed us, we're, we're taking out the state sites, but they've asked us to include a new program to start working with the state um, on and, and asking them, to, like engaging with them during the cycle in hopes that by the next cycle, the state might be willing to include the DMV site or the or New Brighton, but in order to include a state site, you have to have like a letter of intent from the state. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. That's good information. Thank you. Um, is that for questions? Yeah. Could you speak on on the last item from the YIMBY letter? Develop local implementation ordinances for additional transit oriented development state laws. Um, no, what that means. Are you looking at the letter or the? The letter. Can you bring up the list again? And I can, I can, I'm also happy to read what it says under that title. If that would I, I think it has to do with uh, development along our transit corridors, which right. we're, if, if directed tonight, we'll, um, we'll put that in the update. So it, it says the city should include a program to develop a local implementation ordinance to incentivize the affordable housing on sites along the transit corridors. So I guess I'm just not sure what in, implementation ordinance yeah, would, so that would do specifically. So I actually in thinking this through and what we'll probably be utilizing is our community benefits in that um, that's one area if you're along a major transportation corridor, the, the site would probably qualify for a community benefits where we're talking about expanding that community benefits overlay and then they would have the opportunity to get more floor area ratio and height. That's one example of how you could do it. Mm -hmm. But basically what they're asking us is to update our zoning ordinance to create more opportunities for housing, affordable housing along transit corridors. Okay, we can go out to public comment on just this item. Uh, 
Yes, hello, my name is still James Ewing Whitman. I guess I have a clarification question. I have a little sticker on my truck that says NIMBY, not in my backyard. <clears throat> Excuse me, I really don't know what YIMB means, but I would like to. Besides that, it's great to see you guys. I was looking forward to that presentation, and I thought I could have made comments on the uh, body cameras and tasers. So thank you. Thank you. It means yes instead of no. Of course. Is there anybody online that wishes to speak? There is one speaker with their hand raised, Mayor. Janine, you'll be allowed to speak for three minutes. I've asked you to unmute yourself. Once you start speaking, the timer will begin. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Hi, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council members. Uh, my name is Janine Roth, and I am with Santa Cruz Yimby, which, as you, as you note, stands for Yes in My Backyard. We're a chapter of Yimby Action, and we advocate for abundant and affordable housing and inclusive and sustainable communities. And as Director Hurley mentions, we've been tracking and providing feedback to each of the four cities in the county on their housing elements. Um, I do want to thank the director for her openness and the past meetings that she's had with us to get to a stronger housing element. Um, we do want Capitola to have a compliant housing element, and we also want to see the policies and programs that get to more affordable housing throughout the city. Um, I just wanted to share some breaking news from yesterday, which is that the governor signed quite a number of housing bills, but that can also help Capitola, but especially as you're looking to add more housing in the eastern portion of the city with single family housing. One is SB4, which is also known as Yes in God's Backyard, which expands the potential for housing on land, not just the parking lots owned by religious institutions. And as you have noted, there you have two such sites already in your housing element, and there may be more. The other is one that's called AB 1033, which authorizes local jurisdictions like Capitola to adopt, uh, yes, a local ordinance that allows for ADUs to actually be sold separately from the primary dwelling, so including as condominiums. These are exciting laws um, that can actually help with missing middle housing um, in communities such as Capitola. But mostly I just wanna say thanks again to everybody for being open to this discussion on housing and helping us to address the housing crisis in uh, Capitola and Santa Cruz County. We wanna see more neighbors who can live close to where they live, to go to good schools and to be part of the economy and the community that is Capitola. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else online? There are no other speakers, Mayor. We can come back to council uh, comments or deliberation. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to first uh, thank staff for the work in adding uh, policy 2.5 about the labor, um, hiring local labor and, and uh, hiring or contributing to apprenticeship programs that uh, did come to us in a public comment uh, quite a while back. And it was, I think it was really important that we added that. So thank you for taking the time on that. Um, and I know it was already mentioned during the presentation that we were going to include these comments, but I think it's just worth sharing um, specifically about Program 1.1 and the transit route at Capitola Mall. Um, and the idea being that this is, you know, not necessarily that we're reacting to what's going to happen, but that we're, we are an active participant in it and working with AMBAG and working with Metro. And like I mentioned earlier with the Reimagine Metro um, process happening right now, uh, throughout the next year, we are likely to see much more frequency coming through Capitola Mall. And so I think if we can get to that 15-minute uh, frequency, which is, um, I, I think, possible, if not probable, um, that's going to put us back onto what the state of California considers to be a high-quality transit stop. Um, we, for those uh, who, who follow this real exciting stuff, uh, back in 20. Uh, our 2040 uh, metropolitan transportation plan that was considered a high quality transit stop then the state kind of changed the requirements of what a high quality transit stop is and then we fell off of um, that list in the 2045 uh, transportation plan and so now that we're looking at 2050 I think it's going to be really important that we have language in here that shows that we're going to be working with Metro we're working with AMBAG we're not just waiting for something to happen that we're active participants in it so I'm happy to hear um, hear about that 
Um, I think those were all of my comments. Because uh, I, I had a question. You already answered my other question about um, the language in the shopping center redevelopment. I think that's it for now. Um, thank you. I know that this was a, a lot of work over many years, and, and we're not done yet. But thank you so much to staff. I know poured poured your heart and soul into this. I have no doubt. Any um, I just wanted to touch on. I, I think I agree with um, Planning Commission to, to not try to like pigeonhole us too hard into anything and not be super specific where we don't have to be. And that way keep our options open a little bit more. Um, I think that is a wise direction on their account. Um, just my two cents. And then I don't know if anybody has anything else. No, I'm happy to move or to direct staff to incorporate the Planning Commission, HCD, Santa Cruz EMB recommendations into draft housing element in preparation for adoption. Um, I want to echo that I recognize that there's a lot of work and that's been put into this um, and that I like seeing all the parties playing nicely together to get this done because um, we're all saying the same thing. We all have the same concerns. It's been echoed here. It's been echoed on Planning Commission. We're all, you know, working together and fairly in getting our housing element approved. Um, and I really, really want to acknowledge your, your work, Katie, um, because we're the role model, right? We're, we're moving forward in our housing element and a lot of cities are still struggling. So um, exceptional job and exce exceptional job to the team and, and um, our consultants. So um, that's my, uh, my motion. Great, before a second, I believe there's another comment. I just wanted to echo that. I think you've done a really great job, and I just wanted to thank you and the rest of the staff for working so hard on this. Is that a second? And I'll second. <laughs> great. We have a first and a second. Maybe we have a roll call, please. Councilmember Brooks? Aye. Councilmember Clark? Aye. Councilmember Peterson? Aye. Vice Mayor Brown? Aye. And Mayor Kaiser? Aye. That passes unanimously. And again, thank you on the behalf of council and our entire city, because it's not, not anything I could ever do. So I'm just really impressed. Um, and that'll take us to our last item, item nine, which is adjournment. Thank you, everybody, for being here and showing your support for your city. Adjourned. Oh, that was a sad one. There we go. <laughs>